from around the globe, it's theCUBE, covering Fortinet Security Summit. Brought to you by Fortinet. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Fortinet Security Summit at the Fortinet Championship here in Napa. I'm Lisa Martin and I'm very pleased to welcome back to theCUBE, Kenzie, founder and chairman and CEO of Fortinet. Ken, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Lisa. We're happy to be here uh, after almost two years and uh, yeah. It's, I know it's great to see you in person. I was saying before we went live, I forgot how tall you are. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. this is a great event, but I want you to talk to me a little bit about some of the amazing growth that Fortinet has seen. 500,000 customers, close to 30% year on year growth, continuing to post solid earnings. The stock has more than doubled this year. What are some of the things that you attribute this growth to and what do you think, in your opinion, differentiates Fortinet? I think some of the more strategic long-term investment we made uh, starting paying off. Uh, like uh, we're still the only company actually develop ASIC chip, which uh, can make in a huge computing power advantage uh, compared to using software to all the security function computing. Uh, because security tend to need about like a third to hundred times more computing power to process the same data as the routing switching. So that's where for the network security, definitely the ASIC chip has a huge advantage. And we invest this very early and uh, mm. take a long term and also a big investment and so far starting paying off. Uh, the other thing, we also keep in a lot of uh, innovation and uh, internal organic growth for the company instead of uh, do a lot of acquisition. And uh, that's also starting making all these different products integrate well, automate together well, and that's also driving the huge growth, uh, not just network security, but also we see the fabric also has grown very, very fast. Interesting, so you're really yeah. keeping it organic, which is not common a lot of day, uh, these days. We see a lot of acquisitions, but one of the things, so a lot of growth, another thing that we do know that's growing is the threat landscape. I was mentioning to you before we went live that I spoke with Derek Menke um, a couple times this summer and, and John Madison and the Global Threat Landscape Report showing ransomware up nearly 11 times in the last year, of course, we had this rapid transition to work from home and all these devices on accessing corporate networks from home. Talk to me about some of the security challenges that you're helping customers deal with. I think during the pandemic, definitely you'll see a lot of uh, security issues starting to come up uh, because work from home, you really need to remote access a lot of important information, a lot of important data there. And at the same time, the ransomware attack starting, like I mentioned, like 11 times compared to like one to two years ago. And all this driving all this uh, new technology for security. So now you cannot just secure the board anymore. So you have to secure the whole infrastructure, both internal, do a lot of internal segmentation, and also go outside, secure the WAN, like SD-WAN, the 5G connection, and uh, how to secure work from home and the zero trust, uh, their trust network access environment. Uh, all these drive a lot of security growth. Uh, so we see that, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty healthy market. It's definitely a healthy market. That's one thing, looking at it from that lens. What are some of the customer conversations, how have the customer conversations changed? Are you now talking with different levels in organizations, security being a board level conversation discussion? Talk to me about that, how those conversations have evolved. Yeah, security now become very important part of IT, and uh, pretty much all top one, top two uh, on the IT spending now. And at the same time, uh, whether work from home or some other, uh, definitely seeing the board level conversation right now because you can see if there's a security issue for the company, the damage can be huge, yes. right? So that's where the security awareness, especially ransomware, is, is very, very huge. And plus the supply chain issue, some other attack on the infrastructure. So we see a lot of security conversation in the board level, in the CEO, in the in the executive level now compared to before it's more IT conversation. So it's to drive the huge awareness of security and uh, that's also we see uh, everybody starting to concern security now. Yeah, and I'm sure yeah. I imagine that's across every industry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much all the vertical, right? And especially a lot of new area, traditionally they don't have much security, like uh, some SMB, some consumer, uh, some traditional OT, IoT space. Uh, now it's all security is starting to get very, very important for them now. So let's talk about, here we are, the, the Security Summit at the Fortinet Championship. Give me your perspective on the PGA Fortinet relationship. Uh, 
first, I think, is uh, golf is outdoor event, uh, sports, uh, especially during the pandemic. Uh, that's probably become the most favorite spot. And uh, for me, also, I'm a golfer for 30 years. Uh, never a uh, very good golfer, but I love the sports. Uh, on the other side, we see uh, sometimes it's uh, working with a lot of a customer, a lot of a partner. Uh, they say, hey, if we can combine some business and uh, with certain uh, like uh, activity, especially outdoor, that's also be great. And also helping the branding. And uh, that's all the way we can contribute back to the community. So they say, hey, then, then that's the first time for us. Uh, we, we just love it, get, get this going. It, it's great to be outdoors. Great that 49 is doing an event outdoors, showing that yes, you can do that safely. But also, I also hear from some of your other team uh, members that it's a very culturally synergistic relationship, the PGA and Fortinet. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's where we, 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 we love this uh, golf and uh, especially working with a different partner and uh, different customer and also all the team working together. Uh, so it's a team sports, uh, kind of. Uh, on the other side, uh, it's outdoor and uh, all you enjoy. Uh, it's a combined working uh, uh, activity all together. Uh, everybody love it. Something that so many of us have missed, Ken, for the last 18 months or so. So we're at the Security Summit. There's over 300 technology leaders here. Talk to me about some of the, of the main innovations that are being discussed. Uh, definitely we see security starting uh, need to cover the whole infrastructure and uh, especially in a lot of uh, environment traditionally no security cannot be deployed like internal segmentation uh, because internal network can be 10 to 100 times faster than the one connection so it has to be deployed in the in the internal high speed environment whether inside the company or kind of inside the data center inside the cloud uh, on the other side, uh, like a lot of one connection, uh, traditionally like uh, whether the SD WAN or the traditional like uh, cable modem DSL, they also need to be combined with security uh, and also in the zero trust access environment uh, to uh, to really supporting work from home. And uh, also a lot of uh, OT operation technology and a lot of uh, other IoT space uh, utility, all these different kind of. Uh, uh, like uh, uh, environment need to be supported. Uh, sometimes it's recognized environment. Uh, so we see security starting to deploy everywhere, uh, whether the new smart city or the uh, like uh, connect the car environment. And we just see uh, become more and more important. That's also kind of we starting call we call uh, being uh, secure driven networking. Uh, because traditionally you can see today's networking just gave you the connectivity and speed. Uh, so they treat everything kind of uh, no difference. Uh, but with security-driven networking, you can make a networking decision more based on the security function, like uh, different application, or different content, uh, different user, different device, even different location. You can make a different kind of network decision. Uh, so that's what we see is a huge demand right now. Can make the whole environment, the whole infrastructure much secure. That's absolutely critical. That pivot to work from home was uh, pretty much overnight a year and a half ago, and we still have so many people who are permanently remote, remote, but probably will be permanently, and a good amount will be hybrid in the future, some TBD amount. Uh, and one of the challenges is, of course, you've got people suddenly from home, you've got a pandemic, so you've got an emotional situation, you've got people multitasking, they've got yeah. kids at home trying to learn, maybe spouses working, they're trying to do everything via video conferencing and, and collaboration tools and the, the security risks there are huge and we've seen some of that obviously reflected in the nearly 11x increase in ransomware. But talk to me about what Fortinet announced yesterday with Linksys to help on that front in a considerable way. Yeah, that's where we totally agree with you. The work from home or kind of hybrid uh, way to work in pretty much will become permanent. And uh, that's where how to make in home environment uh, more kind of uh, supporting this uh, remote working and uh, especially like when you have a meeting there are some other things may going on in the home activity and also sometimes the data you access can be pretty important, pretty confidential. Uh, that's for whether in the zero trust environment or making the, the home connection more reliable, more secure, it's all very, very important for us. Uh, that's where we uh, were happy to partner with Linksys and some other partner here. Uh, to support in this uh, hybrid working environment to make work from home more secure. And uh, that's what we see is a huge opportunity. 
huge opportunity in a lot of industries. I had the pleasure of talking with Lynx's CEO, Harry Dewhurst, just a, an hour or so ago, and I asked him, what are some of the verticals, since we know from a security and a ransomware perspective, it's just wide open, right? Nobody's safe anymore from it. But what are some of the verticals that you think are going to be early adopters of this technology? I, government, healthcare, schools? I think pretty much all verticals starting to see this work from home, uh, and uh, it's very, very important. Uh, for us, there's a few top vertical, traditionally finance service, uh, is, uh, spend a lot of money, healthcare spend a lot of money on security, so they are still the same, uh, and we don't see that change much. Uh, on the other side, a lot of high-tech company, uh, which also one of the big vertical for us, uh, now I say maybe half or even more than half the employee, they want to work from home. So that's also making, they say, uh, they call home branch now, so it just makes home office just secure and reliable as a branch office. And uh, at the same time, uh, certain government and uh, certain education vertical, and uh, they, they all starting to see it's very, very important uh, to do this remote, uh, zero trust access approach. And at the same time, working with a lot of service provider to support in this, both the TNA and also the SASE approach. Uh, so we're the only companies, only SaaS company uh, partner a lot of with service provider. We do believe long term all these service providers, they have the best location, best infrastructure, best team to support in SaaS, uh, which we also build ourselves. If customers don't have a service provider, we're happy to support in them. But if they have a service provider, we also prefer they go through service provider to support in them because we, we also want to have a a better ecosystem and uh, making everybody like uh, uh, benefit uh, has women's situation. Uh, so that's what we see is uh, whether the zero trust network access or SASE, uh, we're happy to work with all the partner to making everybody successful. And where are customers in that evolution from mm -hmm. traditional VPN to ZTNA, for example? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing an acceleration of that given where we are in this interesting climate? Uh, definitely, because work from home is uh, if you try to access use VPN, you basically open up all the network to the home environment, which sometimes not quite secure, not very reliable, right? So that's where using a ZTNA, you can access a certain application in a certain like environment there. And uh, same time, leverage SD WAN. That's other huge technology uh, advantage. Uh, can lower the cost at the multiple link and balance among different costs, different connection, and uh, uh, different reliability there. Uh, it, it, it's a huge advantage. Definitely. Yeah. One of the many advantages mm -hmm. that Fortinet has. So this afternoon there's going to be a, as part of the Security Summit, uh, a panel that you and several other Fortinet execs are on, taking part in a Q&A. What are some of the topics that you think are going to come up and as part of that Q&A? Uh, I see for certain enterprise customer, uh, definitely uh, the ransomware attack, uh, how to do the internal segmentation, how to securely uh, do the remote access work from home is very, very important. Uh, for some service provider, uh, we also see how to support them for the SaaS environment and the certain whole infrastructure security, whether the 5G or the SD1 because SD1 has a huge uh, demand and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, we grow very, very fast. We become a leader in that space. Uh, it's very, very important for them. Uh, we also see uh, uh, like uh, different vertical space. Uh, some come from healthcare, some from, come from education. Uh, they all have their own kind of challenge, especially like uh, there's a lot of uh, OT, IoT device in healthcare space uh, need to be secured and the same thing for the OT, IoT space. Tremendous amount of opportunity. One thing I want to ask and get your opinion on is the cybersecurity skills gap. It's been growing year over year for the last five years. I know that just last week, Fortinet pledged to train one million professionals in the next five years. You guys have been focused on this for a while. I love that you have a veterans program. I'm the daughter of a Vietnam combat veteran, so that always warms my heart. But is that something, is the cybersecurity skills gap something that customers ask you, Ken, how do you recommend we solve this? Yes, we have been doing this for over 10 years. Uh, we, we have the program we call the Network Security Expert Program, uh, a different level. Uh, so we have trained over a million people. We also commit to train additional million people because there's a huge shortage of the skilled cybersecurity expert there. Uh, so we do work in with over like a four or 500 university globally. And at the same time, we also want to offer the free training to all the people interested, especially all the veterans and other 
uh, like uh, even high school graduate, uh, high school student there, and uh, at the same time, uh, anyone want to learn the cybersecurity, we feel that that's, that's very good space, very exciting space, and the uh, very fast growing space also, still have a huge shortage. Globally, there's a three to four million shortage of the skilled people in the space, uh, which is a uh, very fast growing space, and uh, so we're very happy to support all the training education with different partners, at the same time, try to contribute ourselves. I think that's fantastic, so we'll be excited to see over the next five years that impact on that training one million and also to see it to your point, with how much the industry is changing, how much, how fast Fortinet's growing, there's a lot of job opportunity out there. I think it was Sandra who said that, I was talking to her this morning, that there's, there's no job security like cybersecurity. Yes. Yes. And it's really true if you think about it. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, like uh, remember a few years ago when we started first time to do all this uh, interview, uh, I said, hey, it's a very, very hot space. Now it's get hotter and hotter, more people interested now. And I really thank you, uh, <coughs> the Cube and uh, you uh, give all the support in all these years and uh, we're happy to be here. Absolutely, it's our pleasure. Well, I know you are paired up, you said, tomorrow with Phil Mickelson for the <laughs> Pro-Am. That's pretty exciting, Ken. Uh, I'm not sure I'm a very good golfer, but I will try my best. Yeah. You'll try your best. I'm sure it will be a fantastic yes. experience. Thank you for having theCUBE here, yeah. for bringing uh, people back together for yeah. this event, showing that we can do this, we can do this safely and securely, and also what Fortinet is doing to really help address that cyber security skills gap and uh, really Oh, make us more aware of the threats and the landscape and how we as individuals and enterprises can help yeah. sort to quiet that storm. Yeah, also we'll be happy to be here and also a big honor to be part of the program. And at the same time, uh, <coughs> we also want to thank you a lot of partner, a lot of customer and join us together for this uh, big uh, PJ event. And uh, thank you for everyone. Absolutely, and you guys are a, a big partner-driven organization. I'm sure the partners appreciate that. Ken, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Lisa. For Ken Z, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from the Fortinet Security Summit in Napa Valley.